Good morning all. This at the top of the screen is my Big Clive inspired supercomputer and today I'm going to reveal how it works and more. Now the idea of this is that yes it makes rather a nice backdrop to what I'm doing on the bench and what I was going to do is I was going to add a few extra LEDs to this each video so it just sort of grew sideways. There's not a lot of point at growing up because you can't see the rest of the panel. But I don't know, I'm not really the kind of person who does little and often stuff. And in fact, today I've got a reason for completely populating the entire bottom three rows. And that reason has to do with the peculiar interference <laughs> that you're probably hearing in the background, which is this. It's a tweeter, 8 ohms, 50 watts, and it's wired in series, if I can get that into the screen, yeah, in series with the supercapacitor and the LED array, and it's making this really interesting clicking sound. Now these are 1.5 hertz LEDs, which means that a full cycle on and off is 1.5 hertz, that's a bit quicker than one second. So that means that the on and the off uh, digital transition occurs three times a second. They're three hertz in terms of the clicks we're hearing. Now I've got 13 LEDs here. So if this is running at its maximum frequency, it's going to be 13 times three hertz, which is 39 hertz. Now that's a very low frequency we're hearing much higher frequencies than 39 hertz and that of course is because these are square transitions and a square edge produces harmonics all the way through the audio spectrum so we're hearing some quite sort of high frequency scratching sounds but the clicking rate is only 39 hertz so i thought to make this sound more interesting if i fully populate these bottom three rows and i can't remember how many well, let's count them. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23. I'd have 69 LEDs producing, what's that, times 3? I can't work it out. Well, it's about 200 hertz, isn't it? And 200 hertz is going to be much more interesting than 40 hertz, 39 hertz. So... Yeah, let's get shoving some more LEDs in there. And uh, more LEDs, the more average current this supercomputer is going to take. And therefore, really, the louder this should become, I think. Should sound pretty good. Let's find out. Right, I'm going to disconnect the supercapacitor from the supercomputer. <laughs> and the interference noise. Well, it's not interference, is it? It's the supercomputer. Super singing to us or speaking to us uh, it goes quiet yeah so that's fine let's put that over there so I'm gonna I'll just move the speaker which is in the way at the moment I dropped something what I want to do is bring this board down so that you can see what's behind it hopefully no big spiders no no big spiders and that's the circuit for the supercomputer. Yeah, it's not complicated, is it? It's really quite straightforward. It's LEDs in parallel. Now, of course, these LEDs are special LEDs. In fact, here's the bag of them. Um, they are color red. They are rated voltage 2 volts to 2.2 volts. Uh, <laughs> I think not, because I'm running them from 5.4 volts. The point is these LEDs have a little chip inside which is what does the 1.5 Hertz flashing and I'm assuming that that little chip has uh, a current regulated LED driver as part of the circuit and in fact at 5 volts, I'm slightly overdriving these at 5.4 but at 5 volts these draw about 25 milliamps so they're nice and bright and it's about the maximum amount of current you'd want to put through 
a red LED. So yeah, I'm pretty sure these are five volt, not 2.2. Actually, I think the first thing I'm gonna do is, let's take that out. Uh, drill the extra holes because at the ends of the board, oh, I don't think you can quite see it. Oh, you can just about see it there. I um, There's about three columns that I haven't drilled yet. So I found that this uh, the holes work best when drilled with a five millimeter. <laughs> they're five millimeter LEDs, aren't they? This is going to sound really stupid. A five millimeter uh, Brad Point wood drill bit so that's what I'm going to do. I think I'll do that outside. Now, will this come out as one homogenous unit? Yes, it does. Look at that. It's LED sculpture. That's done. Now, this is going to be slightly messy. Just sort of carving off the burrs. Don't do it very scientifically. In fact, it's completely unscientific. This is making a mess. I should do this outside. Oh, the freedom having your own workshop gives you to just do what you want and make a complete mess. And no nagging. Right, let's put this back in. Oh, I think we can see where it goes from the uh, holes that have no detritus on them. So it fits in there, not that it matters particularly, because I'm going to extend this now with more LEDs. Those two are soldered together. I think there was a reason for that. Yes, I had them in series, didn't I? And was interested in the patterns they made when they're in series. Um, right, now I've discovered, I put these holes at one inch intervals, and I've discovered that the, the, the legs really the long one is just over an inch, the short one's slightly under, and it doesn't quite reach. So what you need to do is before you bend them, I'll bring this a bit closer, you slightly turn it so that the long leg has slightly further to go and the short leg less far. Should be able to demo this actually. Um, so slightly turn it, bend them that way. And then you can see that they're much more similar in length. You can't go mad because um, this is now moved away a little bit from the short leg coming from the next LED. So you want to sort of do a compromise effect. It does work. So push the new LED into there. And then I'll try to get these legs. Um, I want something to sort of do micro manipulations. Yes, like that, so that they're sprung and sitting directly on top of the legs of the previous LED, and then we just solder it. Need to go and get my soldering iron. Today it's the two amp hour battery, um, the BFG, what's that, 121B is it? Which I modified to put a 2.1 millimeter socket the plug and the TS100 soldering iron. Now do I need a sponge or can I just wipe the tip on the hardboard? It's quite abrasive. Probably get away with that, won't I? Okay, 350 degrees. Now I'm probably not going to show you every part of this because that would be really dull, wouldn't it? Just an hour, well half an hour maybe, of soldering that would be really dull and bending the legs of LEDs with a slight twist so that uh, as I say we compensate a little bit for the short leg long leg syndrome yeah it's gonna take a while this isn't it This would be easier on a PCB. I'll give Clive that one. But I like hardboard. <laughs> I 
yeah, I'm having uh, difficulty filling the gaps between soldering with my voice. So I think what I'll do actually is leave the camera running, but speed this up in post. Yeah, once you get a rhythm going, it's not too bad. I estimated it'd take probably about half an hour to complete this side. Now, I'm obviously not going to do the whole thing and then just show you the sound at the end. What I'm going to do is do this side. I've gone right to the end. You can't quite see it. And uh, put the speaker on it and we'll listen to it with that many LEDs. How many did I say this was going to have? 69, didn't I? So probably 46-ish, a bit more actually. About 50 LEDs, and then I'll do the full 69, and we'll listen to that as well. Okay, just a quick test, uh, uh, visual only, to make sure I'm putting these the right way around. Yeah, that looks pretty good. And then they all randomize up. Excellent, right, let's keep going. Super cap up there. There we are. Now there are some bridging links here. Uh, pause, neg, pause, neg, and just a single pause and neg between the bottom two rows. I can put more bridging links on later, but that's probably enough for now. I've moved the uh, black and red wires over here just so that they're longer. Right, let's just check it for to make sure that every LED comes on. And they do, and that looks good. Now, what's it gonna sound like? Where's my speaker? Uh, I didn't count the LEDs. Perhaps I'll count them now. Perhaps I'll count them on camera. Oh, there's my pointer. Right, uh, one, two, three, six, nine, 12, 15, 18, 21. 24, 27, 30, 33, 6, 9, 42, 45, 46 LEDs. This is, this is what 46 LED supercomputer sounds like. Actually, let me put that on permanently because it's going to take a while to settle down and actually start giving us the noise we're expecting. It's quite quiet. I think that's possibly because the super caps are discharging much more quickly now because <laughs> there are a lot more LEDs. To finish this video off, I'll charge this up to do the final thing, but I'll bring this nearer the camera. There it is. And I guess it's just sounding more like noise, isn't it? Me and my friend Brett had a discussion about this and he said noise and I said I thought it would sound more like a modem. But I think it's going to be noise, isn't it? Because it is truly random. Anyway, time to do the other side of the board. Right, inserted shot, because while editing, I discovered you couldn't actually hear anything. The microphone is on the right side of the camera. Ooh. So let's put that up to it. Now you can hear the noise that the supercomputer is making. Right, there it is. It's done. Three full rows of 23 LEDs per row, 69 LEDs. Let's make sure they all light up by poking these things in these holes. Yes, they appear to all be working. So now, let's see what it sounds like. Of course I should do this live on camera. Oh. 
quite a thump when I first connected it. Okay, let's. Oh, it gets really quite quiet. And that is the end result. Is that white noise? It's not really, is it? Does it sound like a modem? No, it doesn't. It's not very loud. I think I'm going to charge this back up to 5.4 volts to see whether the volume increases because it's quite quiet. And it still isn't in the frequency range. I think to get it in the sort of frequency range which I was hoping to hear, more of an ee sort of high pitch whine, we'd need 500 maybe even a thousand LEDs. What was this? I think that was 500 LEDs. So I could do it, but it would just take so long, it would be mad. Anyway, let's set this back up on the back wall where it's going to live and get these taps charged up. And here's another inserted shot. I think I slightly overcooked that last one with the volume level. So let's put that there. And that should give a nice audible result. There it is. And now it's time to recharge the super cap. Let's give it some amps. Apologies, uh, those of you who can hear this. I can't hear it, so it's fine. If you can hear it, you're still young and beautiful. If you're old and ugly, you can't hear it. Some you win, some you lose. Right, let's bring this thing up so that it's louder. Let's give it four amps for a bit. It should be fine at that. I've got a 6.3 amp fuse in there now. These I've discovered are five amps. The MOSFET will get hot though, so maybe I'll take that down to two and a half. I don't want to blow a MOSFET for no good reason. Now is it getting louder? Not much, but it's going to take longer to get this up to this super cap here up to 5.4 volts. Let's bring that more into shot. Uh, simply because there's more current being consumed by this lot. If they're 20 milliamps each and there are 70 of them, that's... Is that an amp? 20 milliamps, if there was uh, five, that would be 100 mil. Yeah, it's over an amp, isn't it? So I'm going to have to give this two amps, two and a half amps. Oh, there they go. But it probably, they won't stay lit um, unless I give them at least an amp. Right, let's have a listen to this. I can't remember where the microphone is on my camera, whether it's left or right. Is that noise? Or is that a modem? I'm not sure it's anything yet. But if someone wants to go ahead and build a 500 LED panel and put a speaker in series with it so that you can see whether this is the world's stupidest white noise generator, please go ahead. Cheerio.